Welcome back everyone. Now that we've gone over the basics about objects and data structures in Python, we're going to have an assessment test to quickly check your understanding. So we're going to do a quick overview of your first test in this lecture. And as a reminder, you can download all the notebooks that go along with this course from GitHub or as a zip file from the course overview lecture. So check out those first couple of lectures. We explain how to get all the information and all the notebooks there. And then you have the option of either downloading the notebook and then answering the questions directly in that notebook, or you can just open up the link and then open up your own notebook locally and answer the questions there. So let's very quickly show you how to do this. I'm going to open the GitHub link right now. Okay, so this is what the GitHub page looks like. We've already shown you this before in the early lectures in this course. Come to Python Object Data Structure Basics, and as a reminder, you can click on here and then download zip to download everything in a zip file. You unzip it, you have those notebook files, and then you can use Anaconda Navigator to go to wherever those zip files were, or those unzipped files were saved. Click on Python Object Data Structure Basics, scroll down here until you get to Assessment Test. Notice there's also a Solutions file. In the very next lecture, we'll go through the solutions. So all the tests here that are in notebook form, you can do a self-assessment against the solutions lecture or the solutions notebook. Let's click on that assessment test. And this one's going to be uh, pretty straightforward. Because you don't know a whole lot about a Python right now, we can't give you too many technical questions. Later on, as you learn about functions and object-oriented programming, the questions are going to get a lot more technical, and there's going to be kind of a right answer and a wrong answer. But right now, uh, these are pretty basic questions. The first one, I just want you to write a brief description of the following object types and data structures that we've learned about, numbers, string, lists, tuples, and dictionaries. This is really just for you to quickly write down, make sure you understand what the differences between a list and a dictionary are, for example, or the differences between a list and a tuple. So as a reminder, you can click on any cell and then change the cell type to markdown in case you wanna write yourself some notes. Up next, we have just a couple of questions about the numbers lectures. So I want you to write an equation that uses multiplication, division, and exponent, addition, and subtraction that when you put it all together is equal to 100.25. So this is just to make sure that you remember all these arithmetic signs. Should be pretty straightforward. And this is just to test your memory. Again, you can just work backwards from 100.25 to actually grab the numbers that makes that work. Then I want you to answer these three questions without typing any code and then use code to check your answer. So I want you to see what's the value of this expression, this expression, and this expression. So this is testing order of operations. See if you remember that. And then here's an interesting question. What is the actual type? So that's the data type of the result of here. So as a hint, we have an integer being added to a floating point number being added to an integer. So what would the type of that be? Then I want you to find a number's square root as well as its square. So find its square root and then figure out what its square is. So to the power of two. Okay, then we have strings and for the given string hello, give an index command that returns the letter E. So you're going to enter your code below right here. So print out E using indexing. Then I want you to reverse the string hello using slicing. So we kind of showed a quick way to do that later on or earlier in the course, I should say. Then given the string hello, give two methods of producing the letter O using indexing. So notice O is the last letter in the string S. So there's two methods of grabbing that last letter. See if you can figure them out using indexing. Then lists, I want you to build the list 000 two separate ways. Go ahead and review the list lecture to figure out how to quickly build out the list two separate ways. Then I want you to reassign hello in this nested list to say goodbye instead. So using indexing, grab hello and then reassign it to be goodbye. Then I want you to sort this list below. So see if you remember that method call. After that, we have dictionaries. So this one's going to be a little tricky because first off, we start off with just simple grabbing the keys and value pairs. So for this first dictionary, or really all the dictionaries, I want you to grab the string hello. The first one should be pretty basic. You see here you have a simple key and then you have a hello. So it's just D and then simple key. So I kind of gave you the answer for that one. The second one's going to get a little more complicated. So let's zoom in and really look at it here. Notice that we have a a dictionary nested inside another dictionary. So you're going to need two calls there. And I recommend that you break this down in steps. Then we have something that's even a little trickier. And just as a quick reminder, these are pretty unrealistic expressions of dictionaries or lists. This is just for you to practice indexing and key calls. So again, try to grab hello from this. And if you're able to do it, then you really understand indexing and lists. 
And then finally, this is the last one. This is going to be a pretty hard and annoying, but just break it down step by step by grabbing keys and then index key and then maybe another index, etc., until you get to hello. Then I have a quick little question here that we've probably asked you before. Can you sort a dictionary? Why or why not? Then we have tuples. So what's the major difference between tuples and lists? And how do you create a tuple? Then we have sets. So what is unique about a set? What makes a set different than, say, a dictionary? And then I want you to use a set to find the unique values of the list below. And then finally, we have a section on Booleans. And this is a bonus section. So you don't really need to do this if you don't want to because it uses comparison operators, which is going to be the very next section of the course. So consider this kind of a bonus section for you to read through, because in the very next section, we're actually going to cover a lot of this. But what we see here are operators. So these are comparison operators, the description of the operator, and then an example of the operator. And I want to see if you can kind of teach yourself what these comparison operators are in order to answer what the outputs are here. And even if you don't really know comparison operators formally in Python, it should be pretty obvious what something like this would be, is two greater than three if you've done some basic mathematics before. Again, this is an optional section because we haven't officially gone over comparison operators. We're going to do that in the very next section of the course. So kind of think of this as a bit of a preview before that. Then we have one final question. What is the Boolean output of the cell block below? So again, a bonus question here for you. Okay, so best of luck. And in the very next lecture, we're going to go over the answers for all of this. Again, these are more kind of open-ended questions. Later on in the course, we're going to get a lot more technical in our questions as you learn more. We'll see you at the next lecture for the solutions. Welcome back, everyone. In this lecture, we're going to quickly go over the solutions for the objects and data structures assessment test. So first off, we had that first question, which just asks you for a brief description of all the following object types and data structures. We're going to go through that first and then head over to the notebook. So numbers, pretty straightforward. There's basically two types of numerical information that we can store. Those are integers for whole numbers and floating points are numbers of a decimal. Then we have strings, which are an ordered sequence of characters, lists, which are an ordered sequence of objects, and lists are mutable, meaning you can change items that are in a list. Tuples, very similar to lists, except that they're immutable. They're still an ordered sequence of objects themselves. And then dictionaries, those are key value pairings. And remember, those are unordered. So now let's hop over to the other questions in the notebook. All right, here I am at the solutions lecture. Pretty straightforward stuff. We just went over the first question, which was just answering about the data types. Then we have numbers. So all we had to do for this one was write an equation that uses all the various arithmetic methods we just discussed. And your answer is probably different than mine, but all you had to do was use multiplication, division, exponents, addition, and subtraction to somehow get back to 100.25. So a lot of this is just practicing order of operations, and you can just work backwards from 100.25 to make up your equation. All right, so your answer is probably different than mine, but here's an example answer. Then we wanted you to answer these three questions without typing any code. So what's the value of this expression and this one and this one? This is just to make sure you understand order of operations. So in this one, this first one, we're going to add these together before multiplying. In this one, we're going to multiply these two together before adding five. And in this one, we're going to multiply these together before adding four. And then the next question, what is the type of the result of the expression three plus 1.5 plus four? So the answer for that one is a floating point number because once you introduce a floating point number into this equation, it doesn't matter how many integers there are there, we're going to get a floating point number. Now the question, what would you use to find a number square root as well as its square? So to get a square root, you can just mathematically say something to the power of 0 0.5 is the square root of the number. Later on, we're going to introduce the math library that will allow you to actually import a math function for doing the square root automatically. But in this case, this is a way to use a clever trick with exponents to get the square root. Then for the square, well, you know that's just asterisk, asterisk, and then two. Next up were the strings questions. So for this one, given the string hello, we wanted you to list out the index commands to grab the letter E. So in this case, if we just count over from zero, let's zoom in one more level so we can clearly see this here. So zero is at H, that means E is at one. So we just had to say S of one returns E. Then we wanted to reverse the string hello using slicing. So we showed you this trick, but basically it means go from the beginning all the way to the end in a step size of negative one. So a nice little trick there, they'll reverse the string and the reason that it's working is because you're going backwards through the string because your step size is a negative one. Then we want you to give two methods of producing the letter O. So the ways to do that 
is using s to the negative or s indexing at negative one to get grab the very last letter of that string or just counting from the beginning up to index four. So those are two different ways of doing that. Then we had lists. And for this one, we wanted you to build the list 0, 0, 0 in two separate ways. So the first way you probably did it is actually the second method listed here, which is just actually constructing the list using square brackets, pretty straightforward. But we also mentioned that you can use multiplication of a single list earlier in the course. So here we have this list 0 multiplied by 3. And now we see it here three times. Up next, we wanted you to reassign hello in this nested list to say goodbye instead. And the way you do that is you had to use indexing twice. So here we go 0, 1, 2 to grab the entire list. And then we go 0, 1, 2 to grab hello. And this is why we have 2, 2 reassigning to goodbye. And we get back the result here. After that, we wanted you to sort the list below. So there's different methods you could have done. Uh, one method that we showed you was this dot sort method. And then you just call the list again. But there's also a built-in function that I want to just introduce to you now, which is called sorted. And that allows you to pass in the list. And this one actually returns the list itself. So notice what's happening here. This dot sort method does it in place, meaning you need to call the list again in order to see the results. The sorted function will actually not do this in place, but instead return the sorted version. So that's the difference between using sorted and calling dot sort. Moving along, let's talk about dictionaries. So using keys and indexing, grab hello from the following dictionaries. And this starts off simple, but then gets harder and harder. First one, pretty straightforward. You just pass in simple key to get hello. And then the second one, you have two key calls here. So first you do K1, and that brings back this dictionary. And then to get hello from this dictionary, you just say K2. Then this one's getting a little trickier. So first we have to call K1, which brings us back this entire list right here. Then we have to call zero on that list. Because notice, and this is kind of the really tricky part, is that this is a list of one element. So in order to grab that dictionary, you had to call zero there. So that one's really tough. And then the next one is nest key. So from there, you're just kind of dealing with a normal dictionary. And then you have that list coming out. So we want to grab the second item in that list. And a lot of people get tripped up by this last one. Why is there a zero there? And that's because, just like before, we have a list of one element there. So if we just want to grab that one string element, we can say zero and then get back hello. And then finally, the really tough one, which was this is hard and annoying. So this one's a little crazy. And again, don't worry about a real life code. Hopefully you never have to deal something with that. And if you do, this is really bad programming, but it's a pretty good question for practice. So what we do here is we say grab the first key, then grab the second item from the list that returns, then grab K2 from that dictionary in here, grab at index one, this dictionary right here, then we say grab tough, and then we just do some more indexing to finally grab hello. And again, there's a zero at the end because this is a single item in a list. And what's really useful for you, if you need to kind of break this down and understand it, is just build it out step by step in some cells. So first run this, just D of K1, then run the next step, DK1 with two, then run the next step, DK1 with two with K2, and so on until you get the result. Then can you sort a dictionary, why or why not? The answer is definitely no, you cannot sort a dictionary because normal dictionaries are mappings and they're not a sequence. And if you're a beginner and you're dealing with really small dictionaries, this definitely isn't clear at first, but I can't stress enough that normal dictionaries are mappings and not a sequence and they cannot be ordered. Later on, we're going to learn about some special libraries that do allow us to use kind of a dictionary-like object, which is called an order dictionary. But right now, normal dictionaries, you cannot order them or sort them. Then we have tuples. What's the major difference between tuples and lists? Well, tuples, as we learned, are immutable. And how do you create a tuple? Just with parentheses, as shown here. What's unique about a set? The answer is that they don't allow for duplicate items. So kind of a hint there, just with the word unique. And then we wanted you to use a set to find the unique values of the list below. So here you have this list, and then you pass it in through the set. And now we get all the unique elements of that list. Finally, we have Booleans. We had a little table here for operators. This is a bonus section because basically the very next section of the course is going to discuss comparison operators and logical operators. So you can see here the operators we have. We're going to explain this uh, in a lot more detail in the very next lecture. But you have a description here and then an example. A lot of these are pretty straightforward. This is checking for equality, inequality, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and then less than or equal to. So hopefully just by learning that little table there, you can see that two is greater than three, that's false. 
Is 3 less than or equal to 2? Well, that's false as well. Is 3 equal to 2.0? That's definitely false. And this one's kind of interesting. Is 3.0 equal to 3? Well, that's actually true. So Python, in this case, doesn't actually care that this floating point, uh, and this one was an integer, as long as they hold the same value, it says they're true there. And then finally, is 4 to the power of 0 0.5 not equal to 2? Well, remember to the power of 0 0.5, that's the same as the square root. So 4, square root of 4 is 2, so 2 is equal to 2, meaning the question is 2 not equal to 2 returns false. And then a final question here, also a bonus, what's the Boolean output of the cell block below? Well, let's take a look at it, L1, 2 of 0. So where is that? We have L1 at index 2, 0, 1, 2, we have another list, and then we want 0, so that's 3. So we know L1 right here at these indexings is actually asking for the number 3. So is number 3 greater than or equal to whatever this is? So let's take a look at that. We want 0, 1, 2, so 0, 1, 2 at key 1, so that's 4. So it's asking, is 3 greater than or equal to 4? And we know that's false. So that's the final bonus question. OK, definitely uh, these questions are a little more open-ended. They're not quite as structured. Later on, we're going to see a lot more structured questions that kind of have more technical right and wrong answers. And you're going to be able to kind of more efficiently program your way through the future tests. Thanks, everyone. And I will see you at the next lecture where we discuss comparison operators and logical operators. We'll see you there.